Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction and then I'll hand it over to Brent. Um, so I want to welcome everyone to the third in our series of AMAs here at the Decentralized Identity Foundation. So today uh, we are joined by Brent Zundel, who is the Principal Cryptography Engineer at Gen and who's also a very active member at DIFF. Um, a couple things to note before we get started today is that if you are interested in joining DIFF, if you're new to the community, um, please check out our membership page or our membership options. I'm happy to go over them with you. Um, and also, if you are a little bit lost at DIFF, we are having a new member orientation next week. Um, so I am the uh, Senior Director of Community Engagement. So if you're ever lost around our community, I'm happy to help you find your way. Um, I'm going to be dropping that in the Zoom chat as well. So if you want to join me next week, um, you're welcome uh, to hop on there as well. Um, so the way the way we're going to do this is Brent's going to give a little bit of an overview on present presentation exchange. And then after that, we're going to field questions. So you can ask absolutely anything about presentation exchange. You can do so in the chat. I will read the questions from the chat, but also you can ask questions from the room. You can go ahead and raise your hand and you can find that under uh, in the toolbar under reactions. You'll be able to do that there. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Brent uh, to give us an introduction and then we'll field questions. So take it away, Brent. Thank you, Lamari. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, this is just a basic introduction to presentation exchange um, for anybody who wants to know anything about it. Uh, as Lamari said, my name is Brent Zundell. I work for Jen. Uh, Jen is, was recently renamed, so people might not recognize it, but they are the company who uh, produces uh, the Avast antivirus software as well as Norton LifeLock. Um, Avira, AVG, um, that whole family of things. Um, I'm here talking because I helped to uh, edit the presentation exchange uh, specs. I also chair the applied working group at DIFF. Um, I guess I'm also on the steering committee. I probably should have put that on the, on the slide. Um, elsewhere in the ecosystem, I'm uh, also pretty involved with verifiable credentials, decentralized identifiers over at W3C. Um, and I'm starting to work on uh, JSON web proofs, uh, BBS, and selective disclosure JOTS at IETF. Uh, so a little bit of everything everywhere. Um, just some brief introduction to presentation exchange. Presentation exchange is intended to be uh, claim format and transport agnostic uh, request and response protocol for claims made in JSON. So it should be able to be used with any JSON claim format, whether that's a JOT, a VC, uh, JSON LD, SD JOT, any, any JSON formatted claim. Um, and additionally, it can be used with OIDC, DIDCOM, uh, Credential Handler API. Um, the tr it's really agnostic to that. Um, the basic design, there's two parts. Of, there's a presentation definition. This is the thing the verifier sends to a holder to ask for stuff. Um, the presentation submission is returned along with the stuff by the holder to explain how it maps back to the definition. Um, it's designed to be pretty powerful and enable a lot of flexibility for the verifier in requesting things. But it's pretty straightforward at its heart um, a presentation is a set of requested inputs. Each input has an ID and has a constraints object. Um, the inputs can also have names, purposes, the format descriptions to say this is the format of the thing that I'm looking for. Uh, the constraints object is where the presentation definition describes the requested fields. Um, so these are the inputs that the verifier is seeking from the holder. Um, the only other thing that the constraints might have in it is a flag to indicate that the verifier wants to limit the disclosure of, of things. So 
they don't want the holder to return anything they're not explicitly asking for. And that's it. That's a presentation definition at its at its simplest. Uh, there are some additional features that allow for greater flexibility. The first of these is called the submission requirements. Um, the submission requirements adds a group object or yeah, a group property rather to the um, to the input descriptors so that different logical statements can be made uh, by the verifier. You know, give me one thing from group A, give me everything from group B, and give me two things from group C. Or in, you know, plain English, I want to see your full name, but it can come from either your birth certificate or your driver's license. Um, one addition like this feature changes it so that instead of requiring that all input descriptors be fulfilled, now all submission requirements would need to be fulfilled. Uh, another feature that can be added on top, to the, on top of the core presentation definition is the idea of a predicate. The predicate format, it, it's kind of experimental at this point, but it allows for JSON schema filters to be used to compute Boolean values so that those can be returned rather than the actual values that are held in the claims. Um, four more features that are defined for presentation definitions. Uh, one is what we call relational constraints. So each of the fields in uh, in a claim um, can the thing that gets returned. Their subject is issuer. That means as a verifier, I want to see something that has been attested by the the issuer. I want the subject of the thing that is claimed to be the same as the holder, which is different than his holder in some way. So I'm explaining this badly. It's basically a, an imagine you are submitting um, the verifier as a university and they want you to, with your application, include your transcript, which has been issued to you. And they also want an essay and they want to make sure that essay was written by you. And so they would indicate that the subject of the essay must be the issuer of the essay, which is you. So um, hopefully that's not too confusing. Uh, the is holder constraint um, is a way for the verifier to say, okay, I want these five fields, but these two, the person who's submitting them to me needs to be the subject of those fields. Uh, for example, if you're submitting um, a name from a birth certificate, the whole the the um, verifier could say, all right, in addition to giving me the name from this birth certificate, I also want you to be the subject of the birth certificate. The person holding and submitting needs to also be the subject. Um, similar to that, the same subject relational constraint allows for any two fields from any collection of, of claims to be required to be the same subject. For example, if you were, um, if the verifier was requesting information about a vehicle, they could say, all right, I want to know the, uh, the payoff value and the current mileage of the, you know, 1965 Lincoln Continental. Um, and that information could come from a variety of different claims, but the subjects all have to be that same car. So you wouldn't be able to take the mileage from your, you know, 2020 Subaru and attach it to your claim of ownership for your 1965 Lincoln Continental. Um, so that's the relational constraints. Um, other features are a, a status. So the verifier can require that credentials be active and not revoked. Um, there, we threw in the ability to add a framing object. The framing objects are handy when dealing with JSON-LD credentials that support selective disclosure. Um, and then the retention feature is something that we added in order to be more compatible with the mobile driver's licenses. This allows a verifier to say, um, of these fields that I'm requesting, this one is one I plan to keep. And here's my, you know, here's what I plan to do with it. And that's presentation definition. You can see it starts off simple, but then grows in potential complexity uh, according to the needs of the verifier. Uh, contrasting to that, the presentation submission is really simple. Uh, the presentation definition 
points to the definition of the ID of the presentation definition that it's uh, related to, and then says, okay, for each input that you've requested from me, here's what I gave you. Here's how it maps to the actual claims that I'm submitting and the presentation. And that's it for a presentation submission. Uh, so that's that's the basics of what presentation exchange contains. Happy to uh, field questions and and uh, chat about whatever you guys want to chat about. So it does look like there was one question that came through the chat, um, which is can so verifiable presentation can be used among other decentralized identity wallet platforms? It's question mark. Um, so I'm taking that to be, can presentation exchange be used regardless of the wallet or the platform? Um, right now, as long as the claims are formatted as JSON, um, then yes. So there's that's the, the only constraint because we've built presentation exchange on top of JSON schema and on top of JSON path, we're deliberately um, building on a platform of JSON formatted claims and credentials. So as long as the credentials are written in JSON, then a verifier should be able to use presentation exchange uh, to interact with the holder and uh, request them. Okay, did that answer your question, Benny? That was from uh, Benny, Benny Jung. He said no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Benny, do you want do you want to um, unmute yourself and go ahead and ask the question verbally? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. Well, we can circle we can circle back around um, if you. We can circle back around to you in just a moment. But if anybody else wants to ask a question, go ahead and drop it in the chat, um, or you can raise your hand in the room. Any other questions on presentation exchange? Oh, I don't actually see how to raise my hand. I'm sorry. It's uh, it's fine. Um, that's Tom, right? Yeah. Tom, it's, it's down in reactions. It should be on, I don't know if you're on a desktop, but it's at the bottom of the screen in the toolbar. It says reactions. If you press reactions, you should see a raise hand button. Well, but, uh, but right now we have Steve in the queue. So I'm going to go ahead and, and let Steve ask his question first. Thanks, Mark. Um, just a quick question. Help me understand the, the, the mapping a little bit better. So as I understand it, you, you essentially have this request and the verifier will say, you know, here are the data elements I want. Here are the conditions upon which I want that I want. Then the conditions upon which they come from, and then as the the, the holder, uh, my job or my agent's job is to assemble these things from various credentials and put them forward along with this mapping to the request. Do I have that right so far? Yes. And in this this uh, request, there you you identify these individual things as IDs. So how do I tie these IDs to the to the various and sundry credentials that I might contain in my wallet that have been issued by various uh, organizations and might be of, of different credential formats. Can you help me understand a little bit better? Yes. Uh, so on the, with the presentation submission, um, first there's the ID for the definition saying, I am submitting this information as a response to this particular definition. And then in the descriptor map array, you have, um, uh, you say, okay, here's the input descriptor that I'm fulfilling. There's an ID for that. And then the, the uh, holder submits the path of the claim um, that fulfills it. So if the, if the holder is submitting, you know, for the input descriptor name, they're submitting their first name from the driver's license credential, they would actually produce the JSON path description of how to find that value inside of their driver's license credential that they're submitting. Got it, okay, thanks. Okay, uh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, okay, I had uh, 
two questions. I didn't read this spec. I meant to beforehand, but is it possible when you're um, asking for requests whether you can indicate whether it's mandatory that the user respond or optional? Um, so this is required, by the way, by California state law. Um, I think the in in I, I'm going to try to speak for the group of us that, that created this thing, and it was our intention that presentation definitions be um, usable as part of a conversation, um, and you know the verifier would present would give a presentation definition to a holder when that holder is wanting to access a service or get some benefit from the from the verifier they want to authorize themselves in some way or provide information in return for receiving a credential um, and so built into using presentation exchange is the assumption that if the holder doesn't respond then um the verifier is obviously not going to give them what they're what they're looking for, but I don't think that quite gets at what you're asking. Um, are you asking about particular fields that are being requested or the response yes. as a whole? Particular fields. So um, it's written into the spec that every field that is being requested is expected to be returned. Uh, um, so and, there's no way to ask for optional fields. Um, there, there is a way to provide optionality to the holder using submission requirements. You can say you can optionally give me field A from this credential or field B from this other credential, um, but one of those would need to be returned. Um, I, we explored optionality for a bit, but didn't have a solid use case to draw from. And so we didn't want to, we didn't want to specify something that didn't match how people were actually using it. Okay. Um, there was, there was a use case that came up. I don't know if you're interested in use cases, but yeah. So the question is that if you go to a bar and, uh, you have to be over 21 and they have a, um, they have a discount rate you know it's ladies night you get 50 percent off so the question is it's required that they that the they tell you that they're over 21 but it isn't required obviously that you indicate what your gender is that was the one that came up um i don't mean that you have to respond to it i just said that that's one of the options that was brought up my other question, though, it relates more in terms of uh, this all sounds like it's very verifier oriented, not user oriented or holder oriented. It is how is how is it possible, given the complexity of this thing that you described, to actually ask for user consent to provide the data? What does it have to be field by field display to the user too? Um, the way that the wallet software interacts with the presentation definition object obviously is going to be up to that the developers of that wallet software um, my expectation is that each field that's being requested would be you know very clear to the holder uh, what they're sharing um, it doesn't work very well for medical information okay thanks Okay. Um, all right. So we do have a follow up from Benny, uh, further clarification. Um, he was saying that uh, verifiable pr presentation exchange, among other ones, is a super big problem for ultimate interoperability beyond territories. Um, he wants to know if you know any efforts um, in the SSI world for this uh, to please let us know, especially in any standard bodies. Is that clear? Um, I'll try. Um, he says so, he's having a problem with his mic. So <laughs> no, no yeah. problem. So, um, presentation exchange is currently included uh, as part of the OID for VC specs um, that are being produced out of the OIDF. Um, it's currently incorporated into uh, the ARIES profile version two as an option for 
requesting uh, the presentation requests in that ecosystem. Um, so there, it, it is being, presentation exchange is being incorporated as a way to do these things. My understanding is that um, because it's part of OID for VCs, then it's also being included in the ISO specs for mobile document sharing. Um, so I I think the answer is, is yes, um, but I'm still not totally sure what it is you're asking. Apologies for that. Okay, um, Benny, feel free to uh, clarify more if you like in the chat, uh, but we're gonna move on to the next question. I have another question in the chat from um, Alexander, who is saying, um, let's see, it's Alex from uh, Portob. Sorry, I don't know Portable. how to pronounce that. Portable. Portable. Port <laughs> we oh, you're here. You're here. Why don't you go ahead and ask yeah. the question? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I can. Well, yeah, sure. I can speak that. Uh, yeah, the question is about uh, the logic for matching presentation definition to your selected or to your credentials, basically, to select some of those. Uh, so far, it's not a part of a specification. At least I didn't see any. Maybe I missed some recent updates, but at least there were no like that before. Like to guide how this matching should happen and what could be the outcome of such an evaluation of presentation definition, considering the set of your claims. Uh, yeah, so pretty much everyone who, who does that, who leverages spec, like uses a uh, library from Spherion. And uh, there is approach to that question there, but questions like from my end is like, are there any expectation to standardize that logic and standardize in particular the output of that logic? So that the goal basically being that uh, we asking the consumer to present some documents and business allows for options like one or another. And we need to build up eventually for a consumer uh, yeah, some menu, like choose one or another. And to make that convenient, it would be awesome to have some standard approach to evaluation, uh, just more, I would say, granular uh, compared to what exists so far in open source. Okay. Um, the, the limit to which the presentation exchange spec deals with this is that it defines processing rules for the presentation definitions and submissions. Um, anything beyond that would be more related to, you know, the UX and the rendering of things for the consumers. There is an effort at diff called wallet rendering. Um, mm -hmm. its primary focus at this point is from the issuer side, you know, as an issuer, I want to have opinions about how my credential that I've issued is displayed, but I think a natural extension of that would be on the, on the, you know, this presentation exchange side. Um, I, the short answer is, unfortunately, I don't know of any efforts that are being made to standardize that aspect of the exchange. So basically, so far, like every implementer does its, their own job to, to, to solve that, basically. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, good so far. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we are going to move on to a question from David. Yeah, th this is not actually a, a question. Well, it, it's sort of a question, but it's, it's also answering um, what Tam Tom asked about the optionality. I haven't looked at the diff spec for a few months, but when I when I did look at it and work on it, um, Brent, though, in terms of selective disclosure, there used to be a field, and it may still be there, which was mandatory to selective disclose or or you may selectively disclose, or you, you, you can ignore it. Is, is that still there? Because that would actually provide the optionality, wouldn't it, that Tom was looking for? So you could say, give your age, selectively disclose it, but but optionally selectively disclose it. And then the user could could present the other details as well if they wanted to. It's um, it, it flips it around a little bit. Um, the flag that I'm aware of that's related to that is the limit disclosure flag. Um, and with limit disclosure, the verifier would say, give me this information and nothing more. But um, there's no way to say, I, there's no way that I know of for the issuer to say this field, I want, you can answer it if you want to, but you don't have to. 
which is a slightly different. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it, it's slightly different. It, it's you, you're not the verifier is not specifically saying which field is optional. It's right. saying this one you must return and everything else is optional. Yeah, anything else that you could give me, yeah. go ahead and give it to me or don't. Yeah. Um, but I'm, yeah, I mean, I've taken note of, of Tom's use case and I'll raise an issue on presentation exchange and we'll have that conversation, see what we can do about that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take a question from Claire. Sure, thank you, Lamari. Thank you, Brent, this is very informative. So I'm gonna ask a newbie question is I have not read the exchange definition. So um, Tom mentioned something about a medical use case, and I'm very interested in use cases. Can you give me an example, Brent, of a use case in the medical field? A use case in the medical field, I'm assuming incorporating presentation exchange and definitions? Yes. Um, most of most of this would be hypothetical. Um, but one, one option would be um, the pharmacy is submitting a presentation definition that says we have to have a properly signed um, prescription. Um, you need to provide us the name of the drug, whether it can be a generic, the dosage requirements, um, and the you know, number of days that need to be filled. Um, uh, expecting that those that prescription would essentially have been issued to the holder from their doctor. Um, but like I said, that's a somewhat contrived on the spot example. Um, another another possibility is using the holder as a means for exchanging medical records between practices. Um, you know, if the doctor's office could issue those medical credit medical that medical information in forms of in form of verifiable credentials then the holder would be able to then take those and present that data to any doctor's office that they're uh, that they're moving to um, so ho hopefully that and and presentation exchange would be useful in all of those because um, especially with um, medical information, Right now, right now, to my understanding, one of the best practices for exchanging data is to encrypt a PDF of everything, and that PDF just gets emailed to the new doctor's office. Um, presentation exchange would allow for a much more granular level of disclosure. Um, it would allow the receiving doctor's office to indicate they they don't want to see everything. They only want to see things that pertain to what they're dealing with now. Um, just a potentially more privacy preserving way of sharing health data. Um, it's at least compatible with that as a notion. Thank you, Brent. That helps give me, with my beginner's mind, more insight into the power and flexibility of presentation exchange. Thank you. Hey, awesome. So uh, there was a follow up from Benny. Um, asking, so I, let me see if I can um, phrase this uh, in a way that's clear. It's um, So I believe he's asking when, when will there be some presence of presentation exchange uh, standards in the W3C, such as the DIDCORE standard? Um, right now, there's no plan to move presentation exchange into the W3C. Um, a kind of natural place for it to end up would be as part of the family of specs that are being worked on by the Verifiable Credentials Working Group. Um, currently, that working group is, um, how do I say it, completely slammed. We, <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot on our plates and may not even get done what we have planned currently. Um, and so the a, a natural next step of that work is to say, in addition to the data formats that we're producing, here's um, a protocol, essentially, or the beginnings of a protocol for a verifier to request and a holder to submit that data. Um, and I think that presentation exchange um, works very well to answer that problem. Um, when it's going to be officially recognized by the W3C, 
I wouldn't anticipate that before, you know, sometime within the next five years is certainly possible. Um, it won't happen within the next one or two, that's for sure. Um, in the meantime, presentation exchange um, continues to be adopted by these other specifications like OID for BC. Um, and so it's it's seeing real world use. It's seeing really widespread real world use. Um, I would go so far as to assert that it's one of the most successful, you know, descriptions of of um, how to do something that's come out of diff. Um, but it's, you know, as far as being adopted by a, an international standards development organization, um, that hasn't happened yet, though I I would expect it to be incorporated um, into some W3C spec sometime in the future. Okay, great, thank you. All right, um, so there was a comment from Justin. I think it was based off some of the early, earlier discussion. Did you wanna follow up, Justin? with any comments? Let's see if he said they responded. He just made a comment that optional disclosure is impractical in most cases once you go to implement it. So I think that was based off of an earlier discussion. Um, let me see, and then we have something from Kalia. Could I add, could I add to that comment? Whether it's practical or not, it's required by law in California. So you can take that or leave it as you will. Okay. All right. Um, and so let's see when we have something from Kalia. Uh, did you want to ask any questions or make any comments, Kalia? She's still in the room. Okay. I guess not. So um, we're down to the end of the questions in the chat. I don't see anyone with their hand up in the room. Are there any other questions or follow-ups to anything that you asked if you wanted to get more details on? Uh, maybe just one more from my end. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, question is about uh, the evidence, yeah? In case, uh, well, whether there were already discussions in the group uh, around position exchange for the evidence uh, and like, yeah, any feedback so far about how to handle requesting evidence as optional or required thing along the way, like when requesting credentials. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, I'll add some more. So in the Verifabri credential, we could have referenced uh, some evidence documents. Yeah, that field is not too explored in the standard so far. Uh, I believe that it's just hidden in every individual use cases, like people just not trying to push it back to the standard group so far. Uh, but I wonder if there were any discussions right now, well, in the past year uh, in the position shade group around like how we could standardize requesting evidence. Like I want to get like say passport credential and I want to get some evidence attached to it. Let's say without evidence, I would not accept that. Mm -hmm. um, the, the short answer is yes, presentation exchange, presentation definitions can, can be used for that. Whether the evidence exists as a property inside the verifiable credential or whether the verifier is seeking for additional evidence from a separate credential, uh, the presentation definition can, can certainly do that. Do you, oh, and then other question, it's more like logistics and priority. Uh, do you think uh, bringing that question to the group right now would find a time slot to do so, or it would be quite busy right now to get priority on such thing right now, like near term? Um, in the verifiable credentials working group for the VC spec? Uh, in the PEC specifically, to standardize, for instance, the format to request such thing. Um, well, so right now, presentation exchange, the definition is. Um, Basically, I'm speaking of potential to, well, to, to grow a new version, basically, of precision exchange, because I believe, like, the last version is locked, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong here, but I guess, like, it's it's a, basically a proposal for the next version would be. Right. Um, so there currently is interest in 
um, allowing presentation exchange version two to exist for a while before we, you know, begin actively working on a version three. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the repository is still active, and so issues can still be raised. Um, whether or not there would be interest in specifically including um, a means of asking about evidence as opposed to using the general structures to allow the verifier to seek the evidence. Um, you know, having had a lot of conversations around similar proposals in the past, um, my guess is that there, there probably wouldn't be interest in the group to add something specific for evidence because there's nothing that would stop a verifier from using presentation exchange as it currently exists to do that um, using just the general tools that are available with the spec. So you mean to ask for some another credential basically? Right, so, so the presentation exchange, you can either ask for whatever fields you want from a single credential or you can ask for whatever fields you want from any set of credentials in the same definition. Um, along with indicating relationships between those fields. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean. So basically, we can request not just data from credential subject, but we also can require to have the field evidence and have some stuff inside. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. That That's extremely valuable. Thank you. Yeah, it's, so, it's very simple, but very valuable. <laughs> yeah, so like that that's exactly it. You the the verifier can say, give me your verifiable credential. It has to have this information on the credential subject, but it also has to have an evidence property. And in that evidence property, I better see that the passport agency actually checked your biometrics or something, for example. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, Thanks that, so that is all possible. Okay, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, do, are there any other questions in the room? I'll give you guys a second to maybe think about that. And I'm sure there's something stirring. I will say that, yeah, just taking a little Oh no, feel free, go uh, ahead. I would say the case with selective disclosure plus some optional if user wills to share it, it's something also valuable for us in our use cases. So yeah, do you think, Brent, there are chances to dis have that stuff discussed in the group right now while, like, as you said, version two is still open for suggestions? Like, could there, could there be interesting to discuss that potentially in the group already? Like, because I, I believe, like, in this group, we already have, like, three people saying about that. Or uh, definitely. Two. I mean, it definitely, um, definitely could be. Um, actually, I'm so I'm looking at the spec now, because um, I remembered us talking about optional fields, um, and we actually merged that capability um, to have optional fields in October of last year. Um, so one of the when, basically, give me one of these things and whether you submit it is optional. Um, is It's in the spec. You can do it. <laughs> so basically, it, yeah, yeah. Because I just, like, when you just first touched the topic today, I just got that basically there is some clash between these requirements, like limited disclosure and optional. Like, and may, maybe, like, depends how you treat that, right? So may, maybe the case that limited disclosure just from priority perspective, uh, like higher so that we just request this and none else. But in case we treat that like limited disclosure for these things and you could still do that, then it's a different story. Then, then it fits the, 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 the scenario nicely. So it's, it's a question of perspective, how, how it's uh, okay to treat that from the standard perspective. I think maybe, maybe it would be good just, yeah, just like to discuss that question in the group and add some more clarification in the spec so that it's, like can be used this way and it's normal. Yeah, I, I should apologize for earlier indicating that optional was something that we hadn't considered because uh, an input descriptor object, you know, will have a field and that field can indicate whether or not the property is optional to disclose or not. So um, it's in there. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Grant. Okay. What section is that? Um, it is 
in the input descriptor object section. I can drop a link directly to that in the chat. Oh, that would be great. So it's in this section. Um, if you scroll down a bit, um, you'll see uh, the optional property uh, described there. Okay, anyone else? Any other questions today? Also, I'm going to um, drop my email in the chat. So if there are any follow up questions, I can go ahead and forward those to Brent. Um, so there's my email, Lamari at identity.foundation. And um, so if there are no other questions, I can give you 15 minutes back of your time. But I just want to give a couple more seconds to see if anybody else has somebody there, something they're stewing or anything you want to add, Brent. Yeah, just before we end, um, I'll note that uh, immediately prior to this meeting is the weekly scheduled um, meeting to discuss presentation exchange along with credential manifest, which is a related specification, um, and occasionally wallet rendering if folks show up and are interested in talking about that. Um, and so Thursdays, um, the hour before the this meeting time, we'll welcome folks to attend and have that conversation and bring up whatever you want to bring up. It looks like there was one more question from Tom. Do you want to ask that directly, Tom? Uh, no, that wasn't a question. I just pasted in the section that Brent uh, was talking about so that anybody else could see it. Oh, okay, gotcha. It seems to agree that yes, optional is uh, possible. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate that. Okay, so if there are no other questions, we can go ahead and wrap it up today. I just want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, for any follow-up questions. We will be having future events with our engineering community. So keep on top of our Eventbrite because uh, they will drop uh, directly from there. Um, and of course, just keep on top of our uh, overall communications um, here at DIFF. So, um, so yeah, thanks. And um, I hope you guys have a great day, evening, wherever you are. And we'll see you next time.